Hello viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. I am Venkat and this is Just Me, an open source channel. Right, in this video I'm going to show you how to create an EC2 instance. Um, many of you might have already done this, it's a very simple thing. Uh, but anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, since I just started this series, uh, I just want to start with uh, with some basics, right? So we looked at how to get a, how to sign up for a free tier uh, account and then we uh, created an admin user account, we enabled billing alerts, and then we've installed AWS CLI tool. So this video is about how to create your EC2, how to launch your first EC2 instance in AWS um, from the management console. So my next video will be whatever I'm doing this video, whatever I'm doing uh, in this video using the management console, I'm going to show you how you can do that uh, from a command line using AWS CLI. So that will be my next video, okay? Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to our AC2 dashboard. And as you can see here, there are no instances, no volumes, no key pairs or anything except one security group. So it's, uh, whenever you create an AWS account, the default account uh, will have a default VPC because you have to uh, place your resources uh, somewhere in the VPC. So, um, AWS, the Amazon, uh, they have created a default VPC for you. They also have a subnet, a public subnet created for each availability zone and also in each region. And there's also the internet gateway. They've attached the internet gateway to the VPC um, so that we can talk to uh, the internet. So VPC, subnet, and all those details will be for a uh, future video. We'll come to that uh, in a bit. Uh, but for now, just understand that uh, your account comes with a default VPC uh, that comes with the default security group as well. So if I look into that security group, the default security group, inbound. So all traffic, and if you look at the source, it is SG, which is same as this group ID. So any hosts or any machines that are in the same uh, security group will be able to communicate with each other. And there is outbound which has got no restrictions. All outbound traffic is allowed, but inbound traffic uh, is allowed uh, only within the uh, machines in the same security groups, right? So security groups are like firewalls. You attach security group to a uh, EC2 instance. So you can at attach multiple security groups uh, to any EC2 instance. So that's like a firewall. You tell uh, what uh, machines can connect to your machine and on which port, uh, how to open up a port, and all sorts of things. It's like a firewall. So we've got a default security group, but we're going to create an additional security group because once we launch this virtual machine, once we launch this EC2 instance, uh, we are going to connect to that via SSH from our host machine, right? So we need to open port 22. Um, so I'll show that. So the requirements are whenever you are trying to create an EC2 uh, instance, you have to think about which VPC you're going to deploy that to uh, and which subnet and which availability zone and what security group uh, you want to put that uh, put in that uh, instance and then whether you need a public IP um, for that instance and finally you need to have a key pair SSH key pair so that's how you will be accessing your EC2 instance so you need a valid key pair okay on the left hand side here on the EC2 dashboard if I go to key pairs there is no key pair. So you can create a key pair now um, or whenever you launch your first EC2 instance, it's going to ask you to create a key pair. So either way you can do it. Um, let's create a key pair now. Create key pair. Uh, give it a name. First key pair July 2019. Create. Okay, so it is going to create uh, it is giving us uh, the private key so dot pem file so download that file I've already got that file so let me overwrite that or maybe I can change the name okay so it gets downloaded so that's your private key um, make sure to protect that private key otherwise you won't you lose access to your EC2 instance uh, whatever EC2 instance uh, you attach this uh, uh, key pair you will lose access right so when the machine is launched, Amazon will put the public key inside uh, the EC2 instance, but uh, Amazon doesn't store the private key. 
so this is your last chance to store your private key which I have downloaded so if you lose this key you will lose access to your EC2 instance on my future video I will show you what uh, needs to be done in case you lose your uh, private key or if you decide you want to change your key pair instead of using this key pair um, if you want to use a different set of key pairs then I'll show you how we can do that in one of my later videos okay so we've got our uh, key pair created so go to instances and then launch instance so we have this uh, the first screen choose AMI AMI is Amazon machine image so that's a quick start I just want uh, to see only free tier eligible images so these are the images Red Hat, Suzy, Ubuntu, Windows uh, and a lot of uh, images are available my AMI so I don't have any AMI so whenever you create a machine you can configure it you can make that into an image so that will be your AMIs and community AMIs so you have different distributions Debian, Fedora, Gen2 those are the um, few things so for this demonstration I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Amazon Linux this one here Amazon Linux AMI so if you see here the root device type is EBS uh, elastic block store and then uh, the default image includes AWS command line tools Python, Ruby, Perl and Java the repositories include docker, php, mysql, postgresql so this image comes with uh, these repositories so if you want docker or php, mysql you can install it it's readily available and these tools here uh, AWS command line tools python ruby are already installed on that machine so I'm gonna select that AMI and I'm gonna select T2 micro so here depending on your use case you can select whatever uh, instance type you want so uh, depending on what you select you will get uh, the CPUs memory storage and so on so let's go with T2 micro because that's uh, free tier eligible okay next configure instance details number of instances so you can uh, create multiple instances let's go with one network so that's the VPC where you want to deploy your uh, EC2 instance so since we have only one default VPC let's go with that one subnet I'm gonna leave that as no preference but if you want you can select any particular uh, subnet so by default when you create the account uh, so now I'm in the London region so the London region which is EU West 2 um, has got three availability zones and we have three public subnets in each of the availability zones. so if you want to specify any particular availability zone that's okay otherwise you can leave that as uh, no preference auto assign public IP so here you have an option to enable or disable so usually when you are creating uh, machines that doesn't need external access or uh, you don't have to log into those machines from internet uh, you can disable this so the machines will only get private IP address but not public IP address uh, the machine will not be reachable from the internet so the normal use case would be if you consider web and uh, two tier applications web tier and the database tier so in your VPC you will have a private subnet you will have a public subnet and you will put all your database servers on the private subnet uh, because nobody wants to access uh, your database server directly so the web servers will be in the public subnet because that needs to be exposed to the public and the private subnet where you have the database servers uh, will need access only from the public subnet where you have deployed your web servers so that's the uh, kind of thing auto assign public IP address so in this case I'm going to enable that or use subnet setting which is by default enable public IP address okay I am role shutdown behavior stop enable termination protection if you check this option um, accidentally you won't be able to terminate your instance so sometimes if you by accident if you terminate the instance it will be gone so in order to protect that you can check this option once you check this option if you want to terminate your instance you again need to go back to the setting and disable this option otherwise you won't be able to terminate your it's kind of a nice little protection uh, for your EC2 instance monitoring you will have some basic monitoring uh, but if you want to enable additional monitoring you can enable that here but that's going to incur uh, cost 
didn't say if you want to run it on a shared or a dedicated machine let's leave that as shared um, advanced details so user data I'm not going to touch uh, anything here in this video because uh, this is where you put some bootstrap commands so whenever you are uh, the commands that you put in here are going to get executed when the uh, instance is launched so it's kind of bootstrap script if you want to install an Apache web server or MySQL or any sort of configuration you can put all those its uh, text files or text commands in this user data but for this demo let's leave that blank add a storage okay the root volume uh, 8 gig that should be fine general purpose SSD delete on termination so by default uh, delete on termination is checked which means if you terminate your instance the root volume which is the uh, EBS volume elastic block store will get deleted if you don't want that uh, if you want to retain your uh, root volume even after terminating your instance you have to uncheck that option so for this video let's leave that checked add a tag let's add a tag you can add up to a 50 tags let's say this machine um, type is web or environment is web that's better environment is web tier or tier web whatever tag you want you can add it configure security group okay so assign a security group create a new security group or select an existing security group if we select an exi existing security group so there is this default security group that got created for your account uh, which doesn't have any inbound rules um, I would suggest not to touch the default security group and go ahead and create new security group uh, you can give whatever name you want and description um, okay so type I want to allow SSH uh, protocol TCP port 22 uh, source this is wide open so anyone can access uh, your machine if they know the IP address anybody can access your uh, it's open to the public although it's protected by the SSH key pair it's uh, open to the wide world so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my IP so it automatically populates the uh, my public IP address review and launch so if I click review and launch it's gonna ask me to choose a key pair okay launch choose an existing key pair or create a new key pair I'm going to choose an existing key pair we already created a key pair named first key pair July and there's a little acknowledgement saying that uh, the private key file uh, you won't be able to log in without this private key okay launch instance your instances are now launching so now if I go to view instances you can see availability zone it has chosen EU West 2a status pending status check is initializing there you go so you've got the public IP address which we will need in a minute to log into that description so you can see a lot of details about this ec2 instance instance id state is pending what type of instance it is where it is deployed which availability zone what security groups uh, what ami id has been used uh, which keypad is used and when it was launched public dns name public ip address private ip address which vpc which subnet uh, what's the network interface EBS volumes and the root device and lots of details okay status checks um, it's still showing it's initializing so we need to give that couple more minutes monitoring so we have these monitorings I think there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 there are a few uh, metrics available for monitoring but if you want to enable uh, detailed monitoring so here's the link enable detailed monitoring uh, but it will incur additional cost CloudWatch alarm no alarms configured you can create an alarm um, for example if you um, if you want uh, whenever the CPU utilization goes beyond 90% and it's uh, in the 90% for more than an hour alert me so that's a kind of alarm if you wish you can create so that's done by the CloudWatch service, which is a monitoring service. Okay, so let's wait for a while before 
uh, we can log into that machine. All right, um, status checks, two of two is done. Status check, system reachability check passed, instance reachability check passed. Okay, so now it's time to uh, log into this VM. So we have this security group. If we go to volumes, uh, so that's the volume that got created. It's an EBS volume that got created and the attachment information. So that's the instance ID to which this EBS volume is attached. Uh, we have this uh, new security group that got created and then we have this uh, new key pair. Okay, let's go back to instances and copy the public IP address. Let's copy that and let me open up a terminal. Uh, I think I've downloaded uh, the private key under downloads star.pim. Okay, I think it's this file. Okay. Yes, search minus I first keeper. Okay, another important thing is you need to change the uh, the mode of the pim file so that it doesn't uh, allow anyone access. I need to change the mode to four zero zero change mode. Change mode four zero zero. Okay. Yes, search minus I first 2009 2019 dash 2 okay and the user is because we've used the Amazon uh, machine image AMI Amazon's uh, AMI uh, the default user is EC2 dash user EC2 dash user at and the public IP address okay cool so that's it uh, we are now logged into the machine and if you want, you can become root user. sudo su dash, there you go. U name minus r. So we are running kernel 4.14. Everything is looking good. Control D, um, control D, control D. Okay, cool. So that's how you create your EC2 instance, right? Let's clean up. Instance, uh, select that instance instant state stop or just terminate so there is a warning that says on an EBS backed instance the default action is for the root EBS volume to be deleted when the instance is terminated so delete on termination flag is uh, set so that whenever you terminate this instance it's going to delete the EBS volumes as well which is what we wanted but if you want to retain the root volume for some reason you have to disable that and then we should be able to have that volume and if you want you can attach that volume to any other instance if you want okay let's go to key pairs and delete uh, the key pair okay so delete that key pair and then let's go to security groups and delete this security group action delete security group s delete volumes that volume is gone we don't have creepers instances cool so that's terminated cool that's it for this video if you've got any doubt don't hesitate to uh, leave me a comment I'll be able to get back to you um, as soon as possible if you like this video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel all right in my next video I'll show you how we can do all these things from the command line what you need to know what sort of information you need uh, before creating an EC2 instance from the command line using AWS CLI. So that will be very exciting, uh, my preferred way of creating AWS instances. Um, so stay tuned and that will be covered in my next video. All right, thanks for your time watching this video today. Bye-bye.